But the, what I'm trying to tell you here is, it's your money, and it's your ham license, uh, and it's your time and effort. Now, if you have the money and the bucks, you you want to spend on a nice big digital rig with a big digital readout and and, and put up a million dollar antenna, man, hey, great, go for it. You know what I mean? That, that's your call. Uh, I wanted something not quite so expensive. I don't know what this is going to cost me. I'm sure Wayne and I will work something out. But I'm not going to cheat the fella. And, but at the same time, I'm not going to overpay. Uh, I chose a tube vintage transceiver. Radio, a transmitter and receiver in one. You can get in, uh, antique transmitters. And you can get antique receivers that are tube. Uh, and sit them side by side. Uh, you, one, you, know, you listen with one, transmit with the other. Oh, I, I did... I did want one all-in-one, a transceiver. So that's what I have here. So let, let's go ahead and uh, take the camera off. Let's take a look at this puppy. Okay, this power cable here runs from the back of the uh, from the back of the power supply. Let me see if you can get that in the sun here a little bit. Well, it's hard for me to see. Yeah, it runs from that connector in the back of the power supply, and it runs over to this connector in the back of the transceiver. So this end right here, which is the male, would plug in there, and this being the female, plugs in there. And that's how the transceiver is powered. Okay, let's take the top off of this uh, power supply and kind of give you an idea of what's underneath it. What we have here is two very large transformers, one being the, uh, the power transformer. I'm not even exactly certain what this is yet. Like I said, I haven't got around to that portion. But these four capacitors are 125 uh, microfarads rated at 450 volts. Now I'm, I'll be replacing them underneath uh, with four 100 microfarads at 450 volts. It should work just fine. This is a very heavy unit. This puppy is heavy. Matter of fact, this little power supply weighs more than this entire radio. I think the radio weighs about you know, about eight and a half pounds, something like that. This thing here weighs much more than that. I'll let it clunk on the table to kind of give you an idea. Really heavy. It's because of this large transformer. Okay, this is the uh, the back of the speaker. The speaker is called a HS1661. It's just a speaker in a box, you know, and, and uh, but it works pretty good. By the way, I never did give you the the power but the power supply number on this thing. Uh, the model number is a PS23. So that's why I think they came out with A and B later on. I don't know something like that. But anyway, that's the speaker. It's, again, it's in beautiful condition. Let's take the top off this baby here. This is the inside of that monster, uh, 18 tubes. Uh, it just goes right on across here, all the way across. Incidentally, this is the audio board I was telling you about right here. And it's uh, that's the one that has the most uh, resistors that are way out of tolerance. And I'll also be replacing this capacitor here, which is electrolytic, and this capacitor right here, uh, which is electrolytic. They have not come in yet. Uh, I, was, I was zeroed out in my order on that so I had to go elsewhere but anyway this what I'll be doing is I cleaned every tube pin like I said every tube socket everything's fine it works and all that these belts these belts uh, most people concern themselves with although you can buy replacement kits now it's the problem of getting them changed is the biggest difficulty but these belts were in perfect condition perfect condition no cracks no anything worked great okay let's take a look at this thing uh, it does light up this is what's called your S meter uh, this is the audio, uh, the, or what they call the, this is the on-off switch and the audio uh, gain, audio frequency gain, which is uh, actually just the on-off volume control. And this is your RF gain, which is just the, it's exactly what it says. It, it makes the RF uh, more sensitive. Then you have a, uh, a function switch right here, which is PTT, push to talk, and then you have a VOX, which means you don't have to push to talk the, uh, you don't have to push the button on the microphone every time you want to talk. If it's in the push-to-talk position, you do. But if you put it in Vox, you just speak and uh, with the button down, and it just automatically uh, transmits your voice. Calibration is used for generating a tone in order to, to calibrate and in order to set your dial. And uh, over here is your band switch at the bottom. This is an 80 uh, or a 10 uh, meter to 80 meter rig. And it'll put out, oh, it can put out up to 100 watts. I don't know if I'll ever use that much. But then you've got a tune button. Don't ask me what that does yet. I haven't gotten to it. But you have lower sideband, upper sideband, and CW. Uh, CW meaning continuous wave, of course, your Morse code. That's for your guys with the keys. Uh, not, not me. <laughs> not yet, anyway. And over here, there's a green 
there's, this is actually a green button behind this silver. And this button uh, goes up and down, up and down. It's called the filter switch for CW and single sideband. It's supposed to have a little tab on it, similar to this one right here, but it's been broken off over the years. But it still functions. So, in my case, I'll be leaving it in single sideband. And this is where your microphone fits in, of course, your earphones. This takes high impedance phones, CW level knob, and uh, what they call a pre selector. I'm not exactly certain what that does. That's what turns those belts back there. And it has something to do with the two final output tubes. And then, of course, this is your final. Uh, you use the outside knob to crank it over here, I believe it is, to let's say I'm on the, I'm on the 40 meter band. And, uh, and it would be around seven, uh, seven megahertz. And then, of course, this has something to do with load. This other, this other button down below has something to do with loading the antenna. I'm not exactly sure what all this is on the transmit side. Haven't gotten to it yet. But anyway, that's the rig I've chosen. I just wanted everybody to see it. There are SB102s, SB101s, and there are Swans. There are Nationals. There are all sorts of tube rigs out there that you can get at a very reasonable price. I just got fortunate in that I met a man who had this. Otherwise, I would have been buying it on eBay eventually, probably, and uh, gone through it top to bottom. I would have probably had to replace a million things. One of the things you have to deeply concern yourself with uh, when it comes to a Heath kit or any other kind of kit radio is what was the soldering skill ability of the guy who put it together. If he didn't know what he was doing in soldering, you got a problem on your hands. You're probably going to have to do the whole thing over again. All right, let me read a couple of little ditties here. Let me get a couple of papers, and I'll read you a little bit about this, and we'll wrap this video up. The fellow says the HW101 was one of the most successful of all Heathkit amateur products. It was manufactured from 1970 to 1983, and it seemed that in those days, almost everyone was running a hot water 101, an HW101. It has an excellent uh, receiver and enough power to do what most amateurs need. It is packaged very attractively compact and user friendly and comes with the interconnect cable for the HP23B uh, which is the second uh, version of this. And here's another piece of paper. Now this is uh, an advertisement I got uh, off the internet. This thing cost $399.95 new. The power supply was uh, $64.95 and the speaker was $29.95 and then of course you could get a 400 Hertz uh, uh, CW or Morse code crystal filter for $44.95. That's it folks. Uh, I don't want to bore you any longer on this thing. It's the HW101 uh, by Heathkit or the Hot Water 101 and uh, next time maybe we'll show this thing actually operational I hope and uh, maybe even have by that time have selected an antenna. Uh, I assume the antenna is probably going to go up in these trees over here somewhere. Haven't quite made up my mind yet. Thanks for dropping in and uh, stay tuned for part six.